Closest I'll ever get to NASCAR is cars. Hey, that's all you really need. <laughs> cars that's crazy. That's all you really need. <laughs> all right, we started recording. Um, okay, bet. So you can you can lock us in now. We with all the right, audience bet. already. Fuck what episode? Fifty six. Yeah. All right, bet. And we are back. Episode fifty six. This is the show about nothing. Radio show about nothing. Podcast about nothing. This is your boy <laughs> DJ Ish. <laughs> dripped out to my left. Also dripped out. D Rock, talk to him. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Boop, the boop, show boop. about nothing. Episode fifty six. It is a honor to be here. We are glad to be here. Sorry about the break. Yeah. <laughs> but Sorry for the you wait. know, real real life happens. Car trouble does happen. Right. Um, scheduling conflicts do happen. We have personal lives, full time jobs like this out the mud. It is. Right. It's eight o'clock, pitch black outside. <laughs> it drove an hour to get here. Like we really working. So yep. apologize. Won't happen again until it does. Right. <laughs> but please subscribe. That's Please. a good point. Listen, it won't yeah. happen if you like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> we gonna be getting paid. You feel me? We don't. We don't have a day job. We'll be doing this at eleven o'clock and going home. Oh, God. But so, so it is great to be back. Me and Ish before we're talking about driving as a teenager, and I was telling him a story about one of the first times I got in my car. First off, mom, dad. If you are listening to this, please skip ahead about five minutes. Um, <laughs> but I was talking about the first time I got in the car when I was by myself. You know, you get your license at 16. Now, it's – it's so I had the the trouble of going to a white private school. I spoke about this before. We'll get more into that on a Patreon one day. But – at that moment when I turned 16 and people around me were turning 16, I immediately realized black people turning 16 and white oh, people yeah. turning 16 Man. is a world what? of difference. Yeah. So, you know, you get to school, you a kid, you a kid, young adult, you you see the people around you getting whips, you're like, oh, I'm finna get a I'm finna, I'm finna get, get a I'm finna get a brand new <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be swerving through traffic. Yeah. What you mean? Different car every so, day. <laughs> the skirt ad lib it just came out too. I was ready. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> so I, all my friends was getting whips. They was coming to school, getting parking passes, paying mm-hmm. for their parking spots. I was like, all right, I'm going crazy next August. Mm-hmm. Summer come around, I say, Mom, I want a car for my birthday. I'm turning 16 in July. I got a summer birthday. Me and Ish blessed. We get summer birthdays. You God's, feel me? God's favorite. <laughs> come on, you feel me? So, get the summer birthday. Ma, what's up, D? I want a car for my birthday. Okay. Who gonna buy you a car? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, you, what you mean? You, you yeah, gonna buy the car, yeah, right? right. <laughs> like, she said, are you crazy? <laughs> She said, you barely know how to drive. How, why would I buy you a car? And that fast forwards me to me driving for the first time. My dad's car, they stuck to the ground. I did not get a car. I didn't get a car brought for me until I was like 20. Uh, so, and I never got another one brought for me again. So, so 16, that's. It's 2014. My dad got a 2012 Avalanche. Blacked out, all tint, beautiful. Nasty. Like a beautiful, nasty car. All yeah. black leather inside, crazy bass. Mm-hmm. He say, hey, D, come here. Your first time, I'm going to let you drive to the store. Go pick us up some chicken, some milk, some eggs, um, and get what you, get a little something for you if you want it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I Bad. do this. I don't even, don't even trip up. Right. <laughs> Pull out the driveway. Trip goes well. I get there, go get my shit, come out. I got my dots. That was with my treat to myself. On the way back, uh, shout out to Fairview Road, all my Covington people. You know what Fairview Road is. Shout out Clemens Middle School, all of that. So driving down that road, <laughs> I pass the church. That's in the front. That's in the front of the road on the right. Yeah. Past the church. Again, sunny day, beautiful day. Right. Everything is going perfect. <laughs> Dots in hand. <laughs> Dots in hand. <laughs> Until they are not. <laughs> A young nigga spilt his dot. <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> So you know, a nigga spilling his dots mean he can't wait the two minutes before he get home to pick him up. A nigga got to get his dots at the moment the dots hit the ground. Oh, oh shit, my dots. <laughs> so, so exactly, I'm like, oh shit, my dots fell. So I go to drug, go reach over the steep seat like I know how to fucking drive. Yeah. And 
reach into the floor of the passenger seat. My face <laughs> is in the floor of the passenger seat. I'm not looking at the road. Nah, Dog, weird. I reach over and my left thigh clips the steering wheel <laughs> and I swerve all the way across the road and handle like but I want to say about 40 feet in front of me is a truck coming right at me. I said, <gasps> <laughs> got up, swerved that bitch back, blowing horns, everything. I said, my fault. <laughs> I dropped my dots, twin. I dropped my dots. That's, that's on me, gang. That's on me, gang. That's on me and the dots. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Full transparency. I've never heard this story either. <laughs> But he did tell me that nigga went to go eat some dots. And I thought that was the funniest word to look. But drop me your dots. Like, oh shit, the dots. Like, like, yo. <laughs> like, yo, what am I going to do without the dots? Yeah. Like, Damn, what happened to the car? And nigga dropped his dots. I dropped my dots, Pop. That's crazy. Like, I still wouldn't be driving if I would have wrecked that car that day. No. Still would not be driving. My parents would have never given me a car nah, again. That's a fact. So, I, I remember when... Uh, I remember asking my parents for a car. Quick, quick side. I do my quicker story, but I remember I was fifteen, going on sixteen. I was got my license the day I turned sixteen. Yeah. I said, "Yo, mom, I want a car." She said, "All right, ask your dad." I started laughing. <laughs> okay, so know what that means? So it's funny. <laughs> my sister in the background laughing her. Eyes. She can't believe it. She, what? I said, "Yo, pop, yo, I want a car." He said, get a job. I said, I can't work yet. Get a job. <laughs> I said, it would be easier to get a job if I had a car. He said, I bet. <laughs> Never got a car. <laughs> that sounded about right, my brother. That sounded about right. I said, you know, it would be easier to work if I, had a, if I had a car. He said, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Sound good to me. Yeah. <laughs> It makes sense to me. I mean. <laughs> nah, that is crazy. Shout out to the parents, man. Yeah. Always. Shout out to Dots. That's not a paid advertising. <laughs> Shout either. out to that's the just, Dots, man. That's for just real. off the strength. And I will say, um, your parents do know best. Yeah. I should not have had a car at 16. So, Thanks. shout out to my mom for probably saving my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's been a great week. Big week. It's Thursday night. We got Ross and Meek dropping tonight. Yep. Pink Panthers is dropping tonight. Yep. Larry June is dropping tonight. Facts. Ross and, I mean, Wayne and 2 Chainz got another single dropping as well. Yep. So it's a lot of music coming out. Jeezy dropped the album last week. Busta Jeezy Rhymes, dropped two albums. Jeezy dropped the double album, actually. Chris Brown is dropping tonight. Yep. Busta Rhymes is dropping in two weeks. Two Chainz dropping. Who? Leroy. The kid Leroy, the white dude. Oh, Clint Killer. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yes, he is dropping. Yeah. My bad. He he does make good music. He has a really big audience. So shout out to Killer. Yeah, no, I, that's what I should love with the nigga. We don't know why so many people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I do want to start off shouting two people. I'm never gonna shout out again on this show. Um, Taylor Swift sold 1.5 million copies <laughs> of her re-released album first week. So that just, that deserves a hand clap. 1.5 <laughs> like, million first I, week. I bro. have had my fair share of hate for Taylor Swift, but look, brother, I, I can't hate On it. an album that came out already. I came out. And on an album that came out already, 1.5 first week. That's crazy. And then Kim Kardashian, I wanted to shout out for the Skims uh, partnership with the yeah. NBA. That shit is hard. Um, I cannot count. Salute. Salute to Kim. And that Kim Carmhart's jar she, she had on the other night. It's ridiculous. But yeah, we need a bounce back season from Kim this year. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question about Lloyd Banks, okay. which we have not brought up on the show. Salute to Lloyd, okay. Lloyd Banks, okay. though. Um, and salute to G Unit. Okay. Lloyd Banks is dropping an album, a sequel to one of his popular series. He is dropping a album, and he is it is going to be a hundred dollars. He's not going right. to put on them DSPs, and right. He said, if you want the album, it's a hundred dollars. Right. What is your reaction to that, man? What a guy! <laughs> you know, listen, the 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 like G Unit fan in me is like, man, that's pretty hard. Yes, sir. But then I remember it's twenty twenty three. Like, ah, uh, shout out to him. Shout out to Nipsey who did something like this. Um, shout out to Nip, yeah. But I like Twice, the idea actually. for like older fan bases for someone like him. Yes, whose fan base would like exactly. go go get it. Exactly. I like it. And if you change the mind, I mean, you know. Think about it, you know? You sell two thousand copies. Yo, if I sell, if I if 20 twenty k people buy it, I mean, that's two million. Hey, right, two thousand, right, two thousand. I make two hundred thousand, and you say, you I, make two million? 
No, I was saying that 20,000 20, oh. people brought it. It was it was oh, yeah. two million dollars. That would be um, hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and my point in this, I brought this up because right before I read this, like mm-hmm. a day before, I saw that Spotify changed their streaming pricing again, right. which is insane that they can just change how much yeah. it is. Artists, please unionize. But artists, unionize, please. The the streams on Spotify to get if you get a hundred million streams on one single song that is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is crazy, which is insane, a yeah. hundred million streams, not even a million dollars, not even a half a million. That's and that's pre tax, right? That's pre tax. That's pre label touching it, pre deal uh, anything. That's one. That's if it's one hundred percent you every time. Yes, <laughs> which no independent artist out there is getting streams like that except for I want to say Russ and yeah, maybe right. it's like some alternative artist. So, and Russ has like five songs with that many yeah. with that many streams. So, I was thinking and I was like, all right, Lloyd Banks. Let's be honest about Lloyd Banks, mm-hmm. amazing rapper, right? A great career, Good not guy. a failed rapper unless you're talking to Drake, right. <laughs> and <laughs> and he is looking at streaming like, dog, I ain't finna sell it. Ain't nobody finna stream this shit a hundred million times. Facts. People gonna listen to it, but the right. niggas I'm selling to, the niggas I'm releasing for, yeah. are not are not listening to an album enough to, for it to get a hundred million streams. Exactly. I sell this bitch for a hundred dollars. I make the money that I would off a stream off five thousand copies. Facts. Yep. So that leads me to, bro, like, music may be headed here. Oh, yeah. Is it in a cycle? In yeah. a cycle. It mm-hmm. is, music, everything in this life is a cycle. Everything right. is a trend. Everything comes and goes. Some things stay for 10 years, so you right. think it's here forever. But everything comes and goes. Exactly. And I think slowly. It's going to take five, six, seven years because the young kids that are getting music at this rate and only know music to come out like this mm-hmm. are going to have a hard time adjusting. But very soon, within, I will say, four to the next four to eight years, Albums will be very expensive. Oh, yeah. I think the Drakes of the world, the Luanes of the world, the Beyonce's of the world, the Hoes of the world will, and I'm not talking about them specifically, just people that are in that light in the next four, four right. to eight years at that status, mm-hmm. will say, yo, like, I spent, like Killer Mike, I spent $500,000 on this project. Facts. Why should you be able to buy this for $10? Yeah. Why should you, why should you have <laughs> to stream it every day for the rest of the year for me to make half that back? <laughs> For like realistically, Think about that. you'd have to listen to it every day, all day for the rest of the year. For him to make half the money, literally, just you. And that's just now say like yeah. a person like me. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to Killer Mike for real, but I love this album he dropped, and I, it's one of my probably my second or third most listened to album this year. Mm-hmm. I paid. I didn't even pay ten dollars. I. For this specific album, I probably for this album with all the music I downloaded that month, I probably paid seventy five cent for this album actually. Right. So he gets a new fan, mm-hmm. and he this guy this new fan streams this album over three four hundred times. Oh, like total over adding all the songs together three right. four hundred times. This guy streams this album. Talking about me, mm-hmm. and you mean to tell me <laughs> that's fifty dollars? Fifty. That's it. That's sixty five dollars. That's a regular work shift. Like that's great. No yeah. art is valued like that. It's and ridiculous. That's the difference. Yeah. It's like you can't you can't even buy a movie ticket for ten dollars. Facts. You can't do any. There's no streaming service anymore for ten dollars. Nope. Like there is no art form, art medium that is as cheap as music is. Right. And music is the basis for everything. TV is not the same without music. Movies are not the same without music. Nope. Life in general is not same without music. Weddings, cookouts, yeah. birthdays. It's nothing really no event you can go to without, without music. Yeah. It is a foundation of life, mm-hmm. and it is the cheapest art form on this planet because I think. Not because I think I know the artists have not had the, the I want to say know-how first, mm-hmm. but also the, I don't want to like treat them as if they're doing something wrong, but their lack of unity to yeah. fight back against right. said machine mm-hmm. has put us in this position. Right. Um, so to that, all of that, that was yeah. a long little tangent. To that, you say, most specific, more specifically, the price of music starting to rise over the next, I'll say, half decade, decade or so. Do you think that is realistic? Oh, I, I think it's 100% realistic, but more so, I think we hinted at it, I don't know if it was beginning of this segment or earlier in the show, 
about rappers unionizing, it's 1,000% certain in my mind that that has to happen. It has to happen at some point for the same reason that for the first time in really our lives, we saw almost a complete halt in all entertainment media from video game actors to regular actors saying, hold on, we are going to take a next step. And if we are not protected in the right way, we're going to lose a lot of money. And rappers, hip hop artists, singers, just artists in general, like musicians, I haven't seen that same approach from them, which is odd because the same way AI can replace a background actor, the same way AI can replace a background singer. Thank you. Or a lead actor, if you're in this Marvel, if you're in this Marvel movie, we can scan RDJ face and 30 years from now, we just throw him in the movie like, hey, here yep. go Robert Downey Jr. They just did it with Superman, I'll do. Literally. Who's who's passed away? Mm-hmm. And the same way they did that, the label could say, all right, we had Drake in the contract. Here's Drake from this year. From this year that you were under contract. And, and the thing is, and, and you see this a lot when there's big jumps in technology, like early in the 2000s, they had this problem with like cyber crimes, things like that, that the laws and the way we govern people always move slower than the technology that is used against them. So if you're not proactive, you'll look up and you'll be so behind like what these artists are facing. And it's come, it's happened little by little by little where the lowest value thing a musician can do now is release music. If you think about it. No, you are 100% like, correct. Like, if I'm an artist trying to advance myself financially, the, like of my options, that's my least one that I would try. Going on tour for past music, top of that. Collaborations with brands, other people ahead of that. Branching out to other, like, mediums where you see people, you know, rappers that a podcast rappers mm-hmm. that act twitch. rappers that pop twitch. yeah twitch mm-hmm. listen you see these rappers popping up playing video games oh bro got a gta server it's reasons why t grizzly made more money off his uh, t- uh gta server than he ever did any than he ever made a rap exactly and that's because shout out to kanye we don't plow our own fields so because this isn't something and when I say this is, I mean the music industry as a whole and just hip hop viewer, like, you just want to hold it there. We don't have enough control for everyone to be like, all right, hold on. Exactly. <laughs> this got to change. We've never all took one step in that direction so far. But, you know, and finality I, brings focus. My. My just adding on to that, I would yeah. say the reason why, yeah, my reason why for that is because I think artists are insecure, yeah, and insensitive, yeah. and that is not a shot at any artist out there. Right. When you are putting your blood, sweat, and tears, mm-hmm. passion, time, money into creating a project, I completely understand you being sensitive towards it. Mm-hmm. I completely understand you having a fear that the next man up is coming. Right. And I have to I have to do everything in my power to make sure that guy never gets hurt. Yeah. And because of that mentality, I think that has prevented what you were just talking right. about. Exactly. The movement. Because exactly. people are too scared to stop. People mm-hmm. are too scared to rebel. The yeah. artists are too scared of what they can what can come after them and what can replace them instead of Drake realize it. Can nobody fuck with me? Right. And then once you by the time you, you you're in this phase. So you're in the 2011 chance J. Cole Drake yeah. phase where you're you're right there, but some shit might go wrong and you might fall off quick. Right. Like a couple of them did. But you go three, four years playing the game, mm-hmm. and then you become Drake and none of this shit matter no more. Right. And then you become ASAP Rocky and none of this shit matters. It's not your problem anymore. If you could become J. Cole, it's not your problem anymore. Yeah. It is not your issue anymore, so you stop giving a fuck. Right. Because when you were young, nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. So it is really just like a a cycle, mm-hmm. a, a snake biting its tail, if you will, situation to where it's going to take a Kanye. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's going to take a, a host. It's going right. to take somebody with more power and influence than somebody, than anybody we've seen come and say, yeah, nah, this shit got to change. Yeah, and I think the one of the biggest reasons is just the way, like, our, like, lives are and brains, like, the left brain and, and what needs to happen to hip hop and to protect the art is so opposite art. It's completely business. It's like remember Fairly Odd Parents? Yeah. How it was the Fairly Odd Parents <laughs> and then the Pixies. The squares. The, yeah. yeah, the squares. They you get need, it? Did you get they were squares? Yeah, they, they, were yeah, squares. yeah <laughs> they need the Pixies or someone and I and, and I really you mentioned Hove. I would hope it would this this could be kind of like Hove's last fight or Joe Button or any one of mm-hmm. the older rappers who've been through both sides mm-hmm. to come together and say, okay. Artists need to be protected like all other jobs. And because another thing that you're seeing, and we actually have the experience to appreciate this in real time, what is happening with Young Thug right now may change how artists move in general after this. Yes, sir. Because if That's you facts. can use what was before free speech under protected under the First Amendment in your art that can also be used against you in trial... That can change a lot for artists because when labels are signing artists to these deals, ask TK, they're not saying, oh, yeah, 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 we got your back, too. They're not saying, oh, yeah, 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 we got your defense. No. We we have it. Like, there are artists who signed to labels that dropped a single five, six years ago. I saw the picture on Twitter. I couldn't believe it. They're like $375,000 in debt because a sample or something like that. So they didn't get none of the royalties from the song and all those bills still come due. But the thing is, when you're young and you're making this music and you're getting famous, it's about the music for you. It's about the music. It's about the art. It's about your fans. It's not about like, and there's no business guy there. There's Mm -hmm. no pixie guy there. Mm -hmm. And if you're lucky and if you're smart, like Hove, you are the business guy. Mm -hmm. Or Kanye, you got Hove there. Or if you're Drake, you got Wayne there. Mm-hmm. And I'm lucky for Wayne, you had Baby there. Mm-hmm. But that's even more of a point where there's nobody protecting anybody in the artist's mm-hmm. realm. And to piggyback off the Baby thing, the Baby thing happened because Baby didn't know nothing. Because Baby didn't have nobody. Exactly. So when Birdman was signing the deals and signing the checks, he didn't really know what he was doing. He didn't know what right. publishing was and what a master's was and all that. Yeah. That was the people up at Universal that was all talking to Baby like, yeah, we'll sign this, give him this. Right. Baby, was, Baby was just being a, a father figure, if yeah. you will, like a label. That's money millionaire. Like just an ex- executive producer in the studio. Nah, mm-hmm. that shit hard. Release that. And he was good as fuck at that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that is that is an excellent point. And I would, to, to wrap this up, It's okay that we're in this position. Yeah. Because if you really think about it, how long has music been this profitable? Right. To where we're look unless you are a fortune teller like all this. Yeah. To where we needed to be thinking of the unionization. Right. Like what have we been through to really think that? But mm-hmm. now that we're here and streaming is happening. Right. It needs to start being a conversation. And again, we're not in the music industry. We right. hope to be able to get some inside information soon mm. and get some connections. Hold, oh, open that DM. Come on, open the DMs, you feel me? But until we do, we don't know the conversations we have, so maybe this is a conversation they're having. Right. But I do think it is time to start the conversation yeah. of unionizing because your art is valuable. Your mm-hmm. art is worth more than $10. Yeah. A Beyonce album is worth $50. Facts. <laughs> if a, if the vinyl mm-hmm. that you don't even listen to is worth thirty five, forty, fifty dollars, what yeah. the fuck? How is the album not the the right. thing I'm actually gonna listen to every day? That's on my phone. Like, yeah, literally. So it is. It's unfortunate, but it with with all hard lessons comes growth. Mm. So, all right, y'all know y'all know what we do. Y'all know what we do. That 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 music shit up we love. Yeah. But this this shit we're here, the yeah. sports, it's just it's just nothing like it. You feel me? So we'll we'll jump into football first. It's Thursday night. Thursday night football. We'll go football first. Right. Uh, so <sighs> let's start with the AFC, and we'll start at the top of the AFC and hit on the Chiefs, Ravens, 
and the Chiefs, Ravens, and Bengals. Okay. Because those three teams have been on streaks. The Chiefs, they got the best player ever. Right. Uh, the Ravens look like the best team in football right now. Mm-hmm. And the Bengals look like, oh, Joe Burrow wasn't helping. And now he is. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start with the Chiefs. Yep. All right, I want to ask – I'll ask a negative about the Chiefs. Okay, Are yeah. you worried about the receiving court? Because I keep seeing questions about it. And they got up to a hot start in Miami, and then you saw in the second half they couldn't, yeah. move, they couldn't really get the ball. It, to me, is starting to be a problem. How do you feel? Because you're – you love Patrick. Yeah. And you, we love Ch- Kelsey. So you know how it – how it, they can yeah. scheme things up. And, and, and I do have a – coming from, like, the position where I watched it, where I did watch Tom Brady roll some target employees out there <laughs> and get to the bowl. Um, but I am I am starting to get a little worried. I'm starting to get a little worried because, especially because how football is. I think, of course, we don't forget. But when we speak in like the season long context, it doesn't get mentioned enough that it takes one game. Like, I, Patrick Mahomes the best player ever, but in one game, we saw it week one. It's just something. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. It's um, you can't catch it for him. So I am beginning to be a little worried because how other teams in the AFC look. Mm-hmm. Of course, Cincinnati looks great. We're gonna talk about them next. Baltimore looks great, but Baltimore, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Cleveland a little bit if Deshaun can play like an NFL quarterback, but they are all a lot better than we thought they would be. And so, well, and we thought the Ravens would be great. We didn't think they'd have the best defense in the NFL. That's too. what's surprising me about the Ravens. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is – what? Sure. so just in that context of, okay, they're still the favorite. They still have the best player. They're going to be the one seed most likely. But, man, if it's just one third and eight and it hits him in the face and he drops it, what can you do? And I think there is that cloud hanging above them like, man – this is a great defense, but it takes one pass interference call, it go against them. Like things if, if it goes the wrong way, can you come back? And that was the always thing. That was it, I think it feels so weird is because we never worried about that for them. Yeah. This was the team where three quarters in, they got seven points. You better buckle up. Because yes. it's 24 coming in this yes. fourth quarter. This isn't that team anymore. So I want to see them against a good team, kind of like how we talked about the 49ers. I want to see them against a good team, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Let's get down early. Yeah. And that's when I know whether I should worry or not where. If it goes, let's say we're going to halftime and it's 3-17, to 17, can we come out like we used to and go five straight touchdowns, five, five straight scoring drives? Or is that just not how we play anymore? Because mm-hmm. that is the big difference right now for me. And – to answer that question, I think ye- no, it's not how yeah. they play anymore, and that's why I'm scared. Right? Because I, I yes, I love the defense, Facts. but you're gonna have to see Lamar in that championship game, or you gonna have to see Bro. Yep, it's one of the two. Yep. They're not going. The only way you get lucky is they see each other in the first round, and you get lucky with Jacksonville or something. Yeah. But I doubt it. Like I highly doubt you're going right. to be able to avoid Lamar and Burrow. And that is why I am worried about Kansas City. I'm not worried about Kansas City getting upset. Right. No, hell no. Like the Browns, no. I'm yeah. not. I love you. I love. I don't love Deshaun. I love you, Miles Garrett, and I love that Browns defense. Yeah. But no. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> But when you play these elite teams that are going to put up 30 points, you're not right. going to stop Burrow in the playoffs from putting up 30, from putting up Back. 28. Same thing with Lamar. So that is what is worrying me is can this offense be great in the moments that matter? Right. Can they be good in the moments that are hard? Mm-hmm. And can they play from behind? Right. These are the things that I am worried about that I think they will see this playoffs, and I don't know if with that lack of receiving core, can they overcome it? Because I love their defense. I really do. Right. And that's why I'm not worried about getting upset. If they had the defense from the past, I'd be like, they're probably going to get upset Facts. in the first round this year for the first time. Yeah. But because of the defense, they're going to get back to the championship game with ease. Right. Unless they see Lamar Burrow. They're going to get back to the championship game. But when you play that elite, Top three quarterback. Right. Can your defense hold them to twenty eight? I mean, to hold them to seventeen. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's happening. Yeah. So me assuming that twenty four is going to be on the board, 31, 27 is going to be on the board. I am worried about that offense, and I do want to say, I do think Eric Bieniemy misses them, 
but they also miss him. I'm glad you mentioned EB. <laughs> listen, you know I'm a big EB guy. Yeah. But the last thing, and I, I know you meant you kind of mentioned it earlier because we be here. And listen, we liked it. You know, we love Travis Kelsey. I love Travis. Everybody loves Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey not the youngest nigga in the world. No, no he is not. And this is. You know, I was a Patriots fan in 2016. Pre-28-3, people don't understand how rocky of a season that was. You know, we're throwing the Michael Mitchell, Julian Edelman. We're throwing the bums because, you know, Garnkowski's got hurt. Yeah. I struggle to think about how the offense would look in a pressure situation without Travis. That is why it worries me. Because if it was just like he was their best wide receiver option – best tight end option so when they lose him it's not the same that's one thing they can't move the ball without Travis yeah <laughs> so if anything happens to Travis at all like gotta miss a game gotta miss a series gotta miss a quarter Lit, duh. <laughs> it, could, it could derail the season that is the reason I'm so worried and I and at 1000 percent I I'm huge on Eric Bannamy we talked to you know we were one of the only shows that talked about like Defending him mm. preseason when yeah. like, we're practicing too hard. Like, okay, this is how good teams practice. You don't got to practice this way. You can just not have a job. <laughs> and now Sam Howell's second in the league in passing yards. Mm. So salute to Eric B and me. But that receiving core doesn't even get open. And take it's 24 off, bro. Like, <laughs> my fault. I, we might be the first one to say it. Take 24 off, dude. You look crazy. <laughs> and, and I really feel like. We talked about how Claire went, my mom is in football, right? Yeah. He dropped a pass. She said, it looked like he had DB. I said, that's why he dropped it. That's why he dropped it. What did I tell you about the moms, bro? bro they like, always they know. They always know, know like, bro. Like, go, go, bro. I'm telling go to the equipment guy and be like, put number 80 on my back. You'll have a great season. You just look. It just doesn't add up, Sky Moore. You look We It just... I'm not a big fan of it. Bro I said, know they said y'all could wear any number. Bro said, take number 24. Why is you... I, <laughs> I I like the number thing, but I do think they should have changed it to where only certain positions can have certain numbers because there's no reason the wide receiver should have number 24. Bro. Like a strictly wide receiver, yeah, like I think crazy. it should have been single digits, the teens, and then the 80s. Right. Again. Like you shouldn't be able to be number 24. And number. That's crazy. Like where are we drawing the line? <laughs> you going to be 35? Like, where are we drawing the line? Because if I see a receiver at 35, I'm going to lose my shit, dog. Game on the line. (laughs) Patrick Mahomes roll out. Throw it to number 38. (laughs) Like, like for real, Scott Moore, take the number off. You're not playing your best. But I still have hope. Rasheed Rice looks pretty good. Mm. Um, That's really it. I have (laughs) hope. I have hope because they have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I'm not ever I'm not losing Patrick. hope. They could go on a three game losing streak and I would be okay. Listen, they they beat the Eagles last year with Ziggs. So <laughs> like we are worried, but like if you really think about it, like really think about it, they beat the best defense in the league with pre motion Ziggs. Like you know, it's, they ran that stunning special. <laughs> I was watching this. They scored the first one. I was like, man, that's a nice play. <laughs> they scored the second time. I was like, fuck you, niggas. Y'all can't handle a short motion. <laughs> oh, man. Mike uh, McDaniel had them niggas looking crazy in that ball. <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo. This is what you say. Yeah, run this way. Run back. Run this way. <laughs> Canary's told he can't catch a cold past the line of scrimmage. Like, so. Two all pro quarter. My fault. My fault. My fault. <laughs> Oh man, that's super happy. It had me heated. So, <laughs> to another great team, Cincinnati. Yes. Yep. Not really too much because they just look like they have been. Right. But I do want to ask mm-hmm. they look very good. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is a hot streak or do you think this is what the Bengals are? You remember? Well, okay. Let me put it like this. You remember in like when you were in school, and you start an assignment, and you'd be like, "This easy money," and you stop, mm-hmm. and then you forget about it till right before. So you like, that's what they're doing. Right now, they are cramming, working. They trying to fill the page. It's just too late. It's just too late. I think Joe Burrow, he's healthy, top three quarterback in the league, no doubt. Maybe top four. Depends how Steve A. Stroud feel that day. But (laughs) (laughs) 
he's going to play great. Jamar Chase is going to play great. Shout out to Lou Anarumo getting the defense together. But where they are positioning, playoff position-wise, and health-wise, T. Higgins hurt. He's not playing. Jamar's hurt. Jamar's hurt. And I think they just don't have enough juice defensively anymore. Missing. Is it Jesse? Is it Jesse? Yeah, it's yeah Jesse. Yeah. I always get his confused. But missing Jesse Bates, I think, you know, against regular teams, it's the Bills, against, you know, teams where you don't know. Lou Anarumo is a great defensive coordinator. You are good enough to beat good teams, especially with Joe Burrow playing perfect situational football. But, like we mentioned, when Lamar, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, when the guys come in, I don't think they have enough to sustain that defensively. Because that was always the hidden sauce on the sandwich for the Bengals. Was Joe Burrow's going to play great situational football. And for some reason, that defense, they're just going to do a little bit enough for you. Yeah. They get one mm-hmm. kick, a sack, a force fumble, something. I just don't see it on the back end for them. Okay. Yeah. So, I like that point. I'm going to take it in a slightly different direction. Yeah. I think that slow start is going to come back to bite them. Yep. I think they're on a hot streak right now, and they – do you have your phone? Can you pull up your schedule real quick? I can't find my second one. Um, yeah, yeah. But – they they come in. They have oh, you about the Bengals schedule. Yeah, the Bengals schedule. schedule. Nasty. That's what I know. Yeah. So they ha- they're on a good streak. But as you said, they haven't really beat anybody that you're like, oh my god, I can't believe the beat. They beat them. Bills. We'll get to later. I think the Bills are in a collapse. It's Can you read the schedule? Thought. Can you read the schedule? Yeah. So next week they got the best QB in the league, CJ Stroud at one. Yes, sir. <laughs> then they go at Baltimore on a short week at eight fifteen. After that. Pittsburgh, then they go at Jacksonville, then they oh. get the Colts, who are a little tougher than we think. Yeah. Minnesota, they're worse, but that you know, still yeah. Minnesota. Then they go at Pittsburgh, at Kansas City, and then Cleveland, who Cleveland always beats them for some yeah. reason. So your last wow, I didn't even think about that. Their last one, two, three, four, seven of their last eight games are playoff teams, and that's not including Indianapolis and uh, my, Minnesota's technically still playoff. Yeah, so. so he just read you the schedule off. Yep. You already have three losses. Mm-hmm. Two more losses. I will be generous and say you lose to Baltimore and the in the Browns. Yep. Let's say you beat the Steelers throughout everybody, you beat Kansas City, all of that. Right. You get two more losses. Now you end the season at twelve and five. Twelve and five has you at a f- the Ravens win the division. I don't think the Ravens are gonna yep. lose more than two more games the rest of the season. So that's four losses. So right. the Ravens win the division. You are a six seed. <clears throat> so now you have to go. Trevor. Lamar mm-hmm. Mahomes on the road. Our Josh Allen, Trevor Lamar on the, on the road. road. Yep. So that just ends up back to your point. Is yeah. I think their early slow start is going to hurt them later because yes, I don't think their defense is what it has been. I think it's good. I think it's solid. I think it can win them a playoff yeah. game or two. But I don't think they're gonna beat three A plus quarterbacks in a row because when you play. The uh, Baltimore, yep. that's the best defense in football. Yep. When you play Kansas City, that's a top seven defense in yep. football. Now, Jacksonville pass defenses are great, but the rush is great. Great at turnovers, too. Yes, and they turn the ball, turn you over. Uh, the Bills, defense fell apart. Right. But if you have to see Cleveland in that first round, or anything, like, it's so many teams that you can see. It's a couple teams that you can see. Miami might say, just run listen, you off the my, field. No, I was going to say, the thing, what's so interesting about what the scenario you just listed was, Miami wins that division. So they're going to be hosting that playoff game. So now you're flying to Miami. And they don't got to go in the cold. They don't got to play in the cold. Now you got to chase Tyreek Hill around. Yeah. Like, on so, the road. Yeah. So that is what the Bengals scare me. But that's why the Bengals scare me. My, my, my fault. But yep. I do like them right now. Fact. <laughs> that's yeah. where I'll leave it. I do yeah. like them right now. I expect them to finish the season, at, like I said, 12 and 5, 13, mm-hmm. uh, 12 and 5, 11 and 6. But I that playoff position is going to hurt them. Yeah. So. Ravens, and then we'll get to the two bad teams in the AFC that we're not sure about. Yeah. The Ravens, though. So I will start with the Ravens because I have watched every snap of their full, uh, of their season so far. Yeah. I'm going to start with Lamar though, because coming into the season, I had, when we did our quarterback rankings, I had Lamar at three. I think he is the second best quarterback in football, and if Patrick Mahomes wasn't the best player ever, he would be the best quarterback yeah. in football. So Lamar was already. The best running quarterback we've ever seen. Oh, yeah, easy. And my two favorite players are Cam Newton and Michael Vick. Right. But what Lamar does with that ball it's in not, his hands is is nothing right. like we've ever seen before. 
But now, mm. there's not a throw on the field Lamar cannot make. Right. And because of that, that and because of Todd, uh, TM, their offensive coordinator, I don't want to mispronounce Todd his last name. Yeah. Leah Monk. And so, from Georgia, shout out Georgia. Shout Atlanta out Georgia. always wins. <laughs> so, he has, Greg Roman was a very, Elementary style play caller, which was pretty much half of the field was only open to look at. Right. And if those two options were two, three options were open, were gone. Right. The elementary school power run game, yeah. all of that. Everything about the offense has become new age, and so it is spread out. And the thing about it is, they don't have no. Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs on their team, right. but they have a bunch of gadget guys. Yeah. Zay Flowers, excellent deep threat, mm. excellent in the slot. Yes. can catch a pass at two yards and get you 10 extra right. yards. Because real shifty. We're very shifty. Bateman, yep. your deep threat. Nelson yep. Aguilar, your deep threat. OBJ and Mark Andrews, your intermediate you over the middle threat. Specialist. You're not, yes. <laughs> you're not, and you're not going to – they're not going to drop ball. So right. you have a secure, two security blankets. Mm-hmm. And then you have Devin Duvernay, who was also your speed guy, your jet sweep guy. Right. So you have an abundance of artillery to use – with a the most di- maybe the most dynamic quarterback we've ever seen that yeah. remains to be seen, but that offense looks so so fluid and so surgical. It it's hard for me to see anybody stopping them and holding yeah. them under twenty points. And lastly, the last thing I haven't mentioned is Gus Edwards. Yeah, he's playing amazing. It's playing amazing yeah. because their run scheme is so uh, their run scheme is so surgical and and manly like we yeah. going to knock you off the ball we going to fire you off the yeah. ball really good offensive line i i, I don't want to i don't want to skip over that they have a really good offensive line right. mars had a lot of time has not been sacked a lot and that uh, is a, another test to their run game why they they've been pushing the defensive right. line off the ball but you're also worried they run a lot of rpos a lot of zone reads so every time they about to run the ball you worried about lamar keeping it yeah. so it's freezing your defense for a second yeah. so offensively they just look so dynamic I think teams are going to have a hard time stopping them. Yeah, so this Ravens team reminds me a lot of a better version of the Cam 15-1 team. Yes. And the reason this one is is a better version, I won't say he's better than Cam right now because it's one of the best seasons we've ever seen. We'll see how Lamar finishes yeah. up. But the weapons around him first are better across the board and upgraded every position, including the best position, which was Greg uh, Olson, upgraded to Mark Andrews. But what the Panthers did was it, their passing game wasn't as advanced, but the threat of Cam Newton every single play changed the math for the whole offense. And what the Ravens were able to do, and this is why we were big fans of the changes in the offense. Anybody who had an idea of how good Lamar is were big fans of changing the offense is because Lamar's running ability and the threat that he has will not go away no matter what play you call. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what offense you run, that advantage – in the run game, where you're a plus one in the run game now because someone needs to be on Lamar, is always going to stay there. So once you implement a pro-style passing offense, everybody's like, well, he only has nine touchdowns. The point isn't for him to throw a million touchdowns. It's to score as many touchdowns as possible. So when what the Ravens can do now, and I'm so, I'm so glad you mentioned how they spread the ball, is not only do they spread the ball, they spread the entire field horizontally now. Yes. And when you can pass to every point on the field, they have to cover every point in the field now. Y'all ever seen how big a football field is? It's ridiculous. <laughs> so being able to play like that while also being downhill, it's probably one of – the Ravens and, and if, health is always one of the biggest concerns for them because God knows they just can't stay healthy. But the Ravens, while Lamar has been there, people forget they always feel like – Boy, if they are locked in, I don't think you can beat them. Exactly. And now they're even better. You hit the offense. I want to hit the defense. Uh, shout out. Was it Barry? or I don't know who in the chat said it. But let, shout out Barry just in case. <laughs> they're like defensive player of the year in football right now. I, we heard Miles Garrett, uh, TJ Watt, a couple names. I have Roquan Smith. Mm-hmm. And the reason I have Roquan, and I know because you see this when you watch their snaps, boy, that whole defense just got to have it. That whole defense just got to have it. They don't want to get stops. They don't want to play good. They got to have it every play. They don't like to win. They hate to lose. They are up 24-0 on the Lions. 
smashing through the line of scrimmage. They want to dominate. They want to, they want to the the level of physicality mm-hmm. that the team brings as a whole. I just love the Ravens. Yes. I just love the Ravens. I think something that is underestimated throughout a season in football is momentum. Yeah. And we speak about team momentum and mm-hmm. team morale, but what doesn't get spoke about in as much is the uh the units yeah. m- uh, momentum. I had I, I was just blanking for the word for a yeah. second. But the unit. So the defensive unit has a momentum within the team momentum right. because they've been so dominant. You know how prideful they took taking one of the best offenses in the league in Detroit and holding them to three point yeah. six points, taking them off the field. You know how much pride they took into taking one another one of the best NFC's offense in Seattle and yeah. holding them to three points. That means something. Locked up, DK. Locked them up. Yep. But Joe Burrow. They had Joe Burrow. I want. 14. Yep. Like that means something. Now, and I want to say one of the touchdowns was a defensive touchdown. I think they gave up one yeah. touchdown that game. So they they are playing with speed yep. and dominance. Like they yep. are, like you said, smash mouth football is what they call it. Mm-hmm. And we have mentioned it every week, damn near. Patrick Queen and Rokar Smith are a match made in heaven because Patrick McQueen was not a a a one A linebacker, but right. he is a one B linebacker. He's a really good edit. And I want to give a shout out to their defensive coordinator because uh Greg Roman because no, it wasn't is it Greg Roman? No, not Greg no, not Greg Roman, no, my no. bad. Um that's the office coordinator. Yeah, shout sorry. out Greg but, Roman. But <laughs> but uh but their defense has been so Good with the pressure. They have brought blitzes at the perfect time every week. And the thing is, they've gotten so good at blitzing, now they're just walking people to the line of scrimmage. So now they have seven people on the line of scrimmage, and they might only rush three. But the threat of the rush is throwing these quarterbacks off. And if you go, shout out to NFL Live. Dan Arlowski did a whole uh, 12-minute segment on it today. Uh, The the team did a whole uh, 12-minute segment about how this is literally changing the offense's football. So the offense the average, uh, the average total right now in the NFL points per game, the points per game average in the NFL right now, sorry, is twenty one point seven. That's the lowest since two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. And if you've been under live, unless you've been living on a rock, if you've been paying attention to the NFL, the offense has been trending upwards every year. But this right. year, we we spoke about it early. Like these offenses look different, but it's because the defenses are getting faster at every position, every yep. level. Defensive linemen, linebackers, corners, safety. Everybody's mm-hmm. getting faster, so they're faster to the ball. And then secondly, the defensive coordinators are getting more clever with how they're scheming up pressure, how yep. they're pretending to bring pressure, how they're disguising yep. their coverages. So the scoring is down, but Baltimore is at the top of the chart when it comes to all of those things. You don't know what they're running. You don't know what right. defense is there. They'll roll the safety down at 15 seconds and then roll another one back up, and then they'll both be back up when you snap yeah. the ball. So you don't know. They can cover two, cover one, cover three. You don't know. And that, and all on top of all of that, they got playmakers at all three levels. Right. And it's just, it's a the best defensive football. And, and another point when we talked about just to piggyback on what you say, like how they can play so many different coverages, they have a unique advantage because physically they have athletes that other bad defense, other bad defenses just don't have. Kyle Hamilton is a huge safety. <laughs> he can cover anybody. Yeah. He is a giant. But Roquan Smith, your middle linebacker, can also cover any slot receiver in the league because he's one of the fastest middle linebackers in the league. Mm-hmm. Your defensive line also has a free athlete in Owe, mm-hmm. who's one of the fastest players on any field he's on. Mm-hmm. So they have so many different intimidating factors, and that is one of the best things about football. League. Like We don't get that as much in basketball where, like, y- niggas are scared. Like, like I, Like, you just know when people are playing the Ravens, they see it like, we playing Baltimore. <laughs> you know, I got what Pat Beth said. I gotta gotta go to bed. I gotta, gotta go to bed, bed early. Yeah, gotta go to, I gotta go to bed, babe. I gotta go to. Hey, listen, I gotta go get I a gotta workout. Drink my Pedialyte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. You gotta see the trainer. Uh-huh. I need to make sure I'm right because they are hitting hard the whole game, offense and defense. They are through you the entire game, and they are. They feel like man. Listen, Kansas City needs to. That 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 is something that I will be watching for the rest of the year. Because it feels like they're on a collision course right now. I, mean, I need it. I yeah. need it. I called it this year. I said, this yep. is your week at the Lamar uh, Lamar Pat, Pat, uh, AMC Championship. Yep. I need it. So, let's let's play a game. Let's play All a right. game with the, with the contenders. Okay. All right. 
contenders. Right. <laughs> Bills, right. Cowboys, mm-hmm. Dolphins. Okay. Out of those three teams, yeah. which one do you think is most likely to miss the playoffs? Right. And which one do you think is most likely to make the playoffs? Okay, so my answers are connected. So the Dolphins are going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Cowboys right in the middle. Because I think, you know, NFC is easy. Division is easy. They'll be okay. But right at the top, this one I'm going to, you know, do a little, <laughs> little pose. Because... <laughs> Somebody told y'all <laughs> that it was going to go sideways in Buffalo this year. Somebody told y'all, man, the grass ain't always greener, that something was a little bit off. Like, man, I just don't know. And the next eight weeks in Buffalo, boy, it's going to be cold. It's going to be chilly. Because <laughs> I, I don't see it, bro. I don't see how they make the playoffs. I really don't. We, we Let me get the bill schedule up real quick. But right now, I just I and I and and I asked this question because I not to like you know we hate on a lot of people on the show and for sure I, I'm not the biggest Josh Allen guy, but the the pressure that that we and the entire organization put on Josh Allen he wasn't ready for, and I'm not a big press conference guy, but every press conference from Josh Allen he is screaming for help. I, I don't know if you guys listen to him, but every press conference, I don't want to hear about your locker room. I don't want to hear about, you know, how this team is built every season. And you know what it feels like? He feels like a little dackish. You know, when the Cowboys lose, like, man, we weren't going to go undefeated anyway. Like, okay, y'all were never going to do that. The Bills <laughs> feel like that, where the Bills have these lofty expectations. Like, man, we need to get right with the Chiefs, Ravens. They need to see us. The, but the difference is, the Bills and a lot, of, let's say 40% of this is because their defense physically fell apart. Yeah, but of course. they don't have nearly as enough good players. No. And, and shout out to Gabe Davis. I think he's a cool dude. Catches a lot of touchdowns. Shout out to him. But it's really just digs. James Cook, good back, but he's not a game changer. He's, Off- not, a, he's not a primary back. Literally. Offensive line, not spectacular. It's all right. Mm-hmm. Tight ends, not spectacular. It's all right. Wide receivers outside of digs, not spectacular. They're all right. And on a team like the Jags, kind of, who are kind of the same way, they have a, a bunch of little great players in certain mm-hmm. places. They are okay because Trevor Lawrence, steady hand. Going to manage the game, make the right throws, do you think. Joe Burrow, people out, people hurt. I'm not my best school. Manage the game, steady hand, make good decisions. Josh Allen can't do that. He physically, and we can't change who we are. We can't, you can't change it. it, It's some, some things are just in you. And when you are one of the five, six best quarterbacks in the world, it's kind of, I bet it's, I bet it's kind of hard to change because the reason he is, that is the reason that people want him to change. They want him to, yeah, keep doing this, but not doing that when they're the same thing. I don't listen. I, you know, Sean McDermott has been a good run for real. And and I think they mentioned this on first day first. I forget who it was, but some coaches are bridge coaches, and that's cool. Buffalo was in a trash place. You got them on the map, made a conference championship game, a couple playoff appearances. But the next guy, probably Kyle Shanahan's nephew, best friend, or some <laughs> guy like that, that'll be the guy to take them over the top. But I just, it's for them, it's over. And I know this sounds crazy. I'm going to answer the question in a second. But that coaching thing you just said. Yeah. I know this sounds crazy. But look out for Sean McVay. Oh, yeah. Look out for Sean McVay. It's going to be hard to pull him away from yeah. L.A. because it's L.A. He built his foundation. Yeah. That's where he won. Just had a kid there. But, but they get that team right. Yeah. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, because no, because listen, Sean McVay not gonna suck for much longer. No, they sir. not. He Sean McVay not gonna. Keep he, he only like coaching enough. To yeah, do that. he want to retire every year. He's thirty four. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so my answer to the question: most likely to miss the playoffs yeah. is the Cowboys to me, mm. and I'm going to tell you why before okay. you scream and jump and yell okay. at me. So. <laughs> The Cowboys are five and three right now. Right. I would say seven losses. Okay. You're out the playoffs. Right. They have to play Seattle. Right. The Eagles again. The mm-hmm. Bills. Miami. Detroit. 
and Washington twice. Listen, that Bills game gonna be sad. That's gonna be a sad game on Twitter. That's four losses. Yep. Somewhere in there is four losses. I'm going to call the Eagles a loss. Yep. They're gonna lose to Seattle. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Buffalo. Yeah. And I'm gonna say Miami, and I'm gonna say Detroit. I can see it all. Are the most. That's who I am looking at them and losing. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason my answer as most likely to miss is the Cowboys. Okay. Now, I will say after that, I have the Bills. Okay. The reason I have the Bills is because of his, his schedule. And Dolphins, I do think they will win the division and make the playoffs because mm-hmm. Raiders, Jets, Commanders, Titans, mm-hmm. Jets again, Cowboys, Ravens, and Bills. Now, again... That's some shit. <laughs> Facts. But yeah. their division isn't great. Mm-hmm. The Patriots, Bad. I don't even know if people care. Exactly. 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 The Jets. Ha, ha, ha. They don't know it yet. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, go go to the ah, go to the box, dog. Stop throwing. Okay, Stop okay. it. Okay. Stop we, it. We haven't been back. Stop. Stop. Doing this. This little backpack walking into the game, they use me. But I love it. I do. I do love it. I do do fuck with it. He's hilarious. And it was funny. Him and Braun get it. They really get what this entertainment aspect of sports is. Why would he do it? Don't nobody know a moment like Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) And what made it even funnier is you don't see Kirk Cousins nowhere. You don't see Kirk Cousins nowhere. (laughs) Like if 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 it, it it would. It would be less funny if in three weeks Kirk Cousins was like at the game, <laughs> vibing out. No, you will not see Kirk Cousins the rest of the Aaron Rodgers. He tells the other team, yeah, hey, listen, give me a couple. You know, hey, hey, no. He's going to be back by week 16, dog. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Could you imagine coming back to an 8-8 eight and eight team off a of blown Achilles? <laughs> at 40? Yeah, it's not even like they was good. Like if they were good, like if they were 6-1, I'd be like, hey, you know, maybe. <laughs> Like, I can see him trying. Like, if it was an elite team, bro, you're going to come back. Y'all not even going to be a playoff team. Like, bro, like, you're not even going to be able to make the playoffs. Like, what are you doing, dog? Man. But, but that brings me to what I was saying. They, I think the Dolphins have the easiest remaining schedule out of those three teams. Mm-hmm. I think the Dolphins are a little bit better than the Bills. I know what happened yep. early in the year. But – a lot of that defense is gone from that game. And, and Jalen Ramsey shout out, here. Yes, and Jalen Ramsey is back. I do think that matters. I do think their defense being that – losing your middle linebacker means a lot. I saw it a lot with the concussions in Luke Keekley. I yeah. know what it does to a defense. You lose your number one uh, linebacker and then your shutdown corner, yeah. your defense is cooked, bro. Right. So, I just think the Bills are on a train for rebuild. Yeah. All right, train for oh, rebuild. <laughs> That's hard. So, so rebuild. Yeah, hell, that might be the name of the episode. <laughs> yeah, so, so that is really what I'm saying yeah. with the Bills, bro. I just think they are too. It's too much going on over there, and I do think the Cowboys and Bills yeah. will make the miss the playoffs. But most likely, I'm going Cowboys because I think they're gonna lose four games. Yeah, the Bills schedule and the to- Cowboys haven't beat a good team. Got it- killed by San Francisco. Couldn't beat the Eagles. So, but earlier in the year, we, you know, we did our predictions and I said, listen, when you get to week 12, Buffalo, that's kind of about it. Yes, you and did. this is week 12 through week 18 at Philly by a week at Kansas City, then Dallas, then at the Chargers, then the Patriots will suck. You'll win that. And then at Miami. <laughs> so that's tough, bro. That's and you we, got four losses already. And what's most important. That like well not most important, but I feel like the nails in the coffin for this one. When you're a team that has an iffy locker room that already kind of has problems, the one place you don't want to do what don't want to go is on the road. That's the last place you want to be. Make your last stand is away from the away from fa- friends, family, outside your routine. All like three or four of these games that's going to decide their season are on the road a for a point. locker room that's already in pieces. Listen, I, and, and I love being right. One of these weeks, I'm telling you, listen, 14 goals. Listen, credit to Diggs, he's caught everything almost. He's caught almost ever. I think he had one bad drop a couple weeks ago, but he's going to be open on that post. Josh going to miss him. And his helmet going in the 17th row. Listen, he is going to slam that helmet <laughs> on the ground. Listen, he's going to get shaved. It's going to get so bad on that sideline. <laughs> it's going to get 
so bad All right. I love you. Can't wait. Yep. <laughs> but <laughs> NFC. Yep. Let's start with the home team, man. I we called it. You're welcome. Yep. As we always do. Desmond Ritter got benched. Shout out to him. And DoorDash driver. I think this was needed. Not I think this was needed. Yep. And I want to explain why before Ish goes off on Arthur Smith. Right. Because that's what he's I know that's Facts. what he's gonna do. I know he's going yeah. to do that for two We might weeks. have to play somebody else. So, <laughs> so so real quick to wrap up football because we do we we've been talking for an hour already. So <laughs> Taylor Heineke is not your answer. No. Right. I know that, Chris. Desmond Ritter was not the answer. Mm-hmm. That's something y'all needed to know. That's something the organization needed to know. Right. My fear with the Falcons was that this year, Desmond Ritter was going to play well enough to win nine games and sneak them in the playoffs. Right. Because he is benched, you now know, Yeah. all right, we need a quarterback. Yeah. Whether, like I said, Dak Prescott, you may be in Atlanta Falcon next year. That is Justin Fields, yep. Kirk Cousins. Uh, well, Marge, oh, my, my fault, y'all told him no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all told, y'all told, y'all told him no. Uh, nah, Caleb, uh, trade up in the draft and try to get Drake May. You're not getting Caleb Williams, but yeah. Drake May. You're now in the quarterback sweepstakes. Yep. And the beauty is it, you don't have to pay Kyle Pitts yet. Nope. You don't have to pay Drake London yet. You don't have to pay Behind yet. Nope. You don't have to pay Jesse Bates. You, you already pay, paid him. Yeah, yep. but I already pay him. Grady Jarrett is taken care of. Yep. Um, Calais Campbell is taken care of. So your good, really good pieces are taken care of. Mm-hmm. Or you don't have to pay them. And because you'll be getting a rookie quarterback, I'm assuming you have a young team. You'll probably try to stay young. I think they'll do a bridge quarterback. The only way they don't to go young is Justin Fields. They'll have to pay Justin Fields, which is why I don't think they'll get him. Right. But it's long winded. So they will be in the quarterback sweepstakes, which is exactly where you need it to be because you didn't have a Super Bowl roster because you don't have a playoff quarterback. Thanks. You can have a Super Bowl roster with just a – Fringe playoff quarterback and win a Super Bowl. True. You cannot win a Super Bowl with a Super Bowl roster and a can't make a playoff quarterback. Right. So, I think the Falcons are in a good position. Whatever. I know the season is disappointing because the, y'all got a lot of hope at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. The season will continue to be full of ups and downs because Arthur Smith is a bad coach. He mm-hmm. has no idea what he is doing. Yeah. And it is very obvious that this was something he took up because he was too rich and needed something to do. He was 1,000% too bored. Bored as fuck. Yeah, I, I was don't like, know. I'll I, go coach football. Listen, I don't know how Arthur Smith ended up in this position. I thought it was, I thought it was very hilarious mm-hmm. that – as he started to coach worse, I started to find out how rich he was <laughs> after. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Shout out to the social media for, for, for you know, Bleacher Report and all of them. Like, hey, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this so, guy who's destroying your fantasy season, you don't even need it for real. Like, like, he just out here because. like. <laughs> so, to wrap up before he gets into Arthur Smith pause, I, I want to say Desmond Ritter. Yeah. I'm sorry. But you're just not an NFL level quarterback, my brother. Yo, listen, and, you know Taylor Heineke, you are not either. It's only like, 15 <laughs> but enjoy of your them. time. Listen, it's, it's only like 15, it's 15 of them. Okay? Of them. <laughs> it's 15 of them. Dog. Ain't holding it so, against you. Um, so you have your roster. Yep. <laughs> You're going to go get your quarterback next year, and if you don't get him next year, if you need a bridge, if you got to get Ryan Tannehill for a year, or you got to get Kurt mm-hmm. Cousins for a year on a rental, and you want your next draft. All right, mm-hmm. cool. But now, you got one more step. Yeah, take it away. Listen, so <laughs> I, this probably won't be the cover for the episode, but for one of the shorts, mm-hmm. we're gonna have the the movie villain, and it's gonna be Desmond Ritter. <laughs> And then the actual <laughs> villain is going to be Arthur Smith. And I want to start by starting, actually starting with Desmond Ritter, because we were the first people to say he can't start on this team. <laughs> and I want to apologize because I'm going to keep it a right. I don't even know if you trash for real, bro. I can't even say it. I can't even stand 10 toes and be like, you know what? You stink. I know you're not a, you know, a star. I know you're not a NFL franchise quarterback. But how do I know you're better? You know, how do I know you're worse than Zach Wilson? Zach Wilson's still starting, you not. I can't say that because 
on first and ten after a turnover, your third string tight end is throwing a first of all, <laughs> he's he's getting a halfback toss. He's getting a your third string tight end is getting a halfback toss. And he's throwing it to your second string tight end in the back of the end zone. And under them circumstances, I don't know who could succeed. <laughs> Behan has one carry in goal to go situations. He has one carry the entire season. Sweet. Desmond Ritter has more, and he didn't even play last week. <laughs> what Arthur Smith is doing, and you know, the hubris that it takes to reach a certain <laughs> level of sports, we always talk about it. Like, you should think you're the best. Not you, Arthur Smith. <laughs> you should not. You were the offensive coordinator for a mediocre offense to begin with. That's why the you know shout out to Chris. The the this isn't my GM fault. Somebody hired him. He didn't just walk in here like, hey, position open. You know, I just leave my stuff here. Like, you hired the offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> like for real. Let that set in. Let that set in for real. Of all the <laughs> offensive coordinators who you could probably safely assume wasn't a genius, maybe it was the 2,000-yard rush Derrick Henry coordinator. Maybe it was the handed off to Derrick Henry four times a series guy. Maybe he wasn't the best offensive mind. But what we're seeing now, and it's very interesting because it really took me a moment to figure it out. Because I'm, I'm looking at the Titans film, and I'm like, man. This looks so different. Like, the Titans were so intentional. Derrick Henry was going to get his 26 carries. Cut play action off of that. Whoever else eat, that's after Derrick Henry. Yes, right? sir. Listen, biggest line, get to the get to the deer first. Everybody else eat up after that. Exactly. And I'm watching the Falcons, and you got Behan, number one in the running back world in pass routes. He's number one in the league in the NFL in routes. You know, he will develop into a great receiving back. But right now, splitting him out, out wide versus corners, it's a lot to ask for him. And it's a lot to ask for him with a mediocre quarterback. And the biggest problem I have with Arthur Smith right now is it seems like he don't know it. Like, that's my biggest problem. Like, why can't you answer any of the questions, bro? Like, I listened for you to, for five minutes. They said, why ain't behind getting carries in the goal line? He's like, I didn't hear that. You know, we didn't hear that. You, what do you mean hear? You were there. You were at the game. Like, your offense cannot score. And I am not a, you know, listen, I, okay. I will fire my handful of coaches. I, I, I get on this show, I tell you a lot of coaches, and we be right, that guy can't coach. And we're like 100% for it. But Arthur Smith, we drafted offense. We prioritized offense. Three years in a row, we said we don't want to trade this pick to the Ravens for Lamar Jackson because we're going to pick a running back here <laughs> after we had a 1,000-yard rusher the year before because you're a running back's coach. You are a hand-the-ball off coach, so we're going to get you a running back. Why can't we score? A really good one, too. <laughs> we said, all right, we're going to reach on a receiver. Even if he's not the best receiver there, he's a great fit for your system. A lot of play action, a lot of contested catches. Catches over the middle. You don't need a real speedster. You need a really good secure possession wide receiver. We can say, oh, you could just Drake London. All right, cool. You can't get him the ball. Kyle, you are a offensive run coach play action, and you can't get Kyle Pitts the ball. It's so frustrating. And I, the people I really feel bad for are the Falcons fans. And it's hard for me to feel bad about y'all because of the curse. But this is, and this is no joke, the easiest schedule in the NFL. And be honest with me, Rock. Kyler Murray coming back first game. Would you be surprised? Like, how surprised? Oh, no, they're losing. They're losing. Like, that's the, they're like losing. that is they're the losing. problem. So let me. They're Jets. They're Jets what? East. Just south. He's losing the locker room. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's losing. For sure. Because yeah. you think you're smarter than everybody else that's ever coached football. Ever. ever. You the only coach in the history of this game that's yeah. like, yo, my best players yeah. not gonna touch the ball. Right. He's 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 effective off the ball. Like what Steph, the f like Steph like boy he, like he's a shooter. Like he's what a does that mean, dog? <laughs> 
your running back is effective off the ball? And, and you know, yo, what does that mean? Your running back. Not a wide receiver. He's not pulling coverage. I, I told, he think he's an evil genius because oh, he, he run the loop motion. I'm telling you. He, he, so, he, he think he's a genius, he said, dog. Be, he said, be on sprint left. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> he said, that's that shit right there. That's going to get him. That's going to get him, boys. Like, And just to just to wrap this up, uh, like we talked about the Taylor Heineke switch. The reason Taylor Heineke is a better fit, it's like, man, have you ever worked at a restaurant? Hmm? Have you ever worked at a restaurant? Oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how I get back there. Oh, geez. and the guy who runs. I was your... the reason it got like this. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the guy who runs your local Chili's is probably one of the craziest guys you know in the world. One of the best multitaskers. He he gets six or seven going out a row, but he wouldn't run Hell's Kitchen. And there's a reason for that, because different people have different skill sets. This team, I don't know what they're doing. Nobody knows what's going on there. Behan, he he can't get, he can't run the ball. Cordero Patterson, uh, 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 the, probably the veteran on your team. I I don't know. I'd have to check the roster. He may be the only Super Bowl champion on your team. Clay Campbell, I think one one did he? I want to say he was on that Raiders team that was won with on the Ravens. I want to no, say he was on Jags. Yeah, he was. Only veteran on your team. Cordero Patterson has been on several trash teams and never acted like this. Cordero Patterson on Twitter posting his highlights. Like, yo, y'all know I can do this, right? Y'all know I can still do this, right? It, it's Shout I, out to OBJ dad. <laughs> and bro, like if if it was like, you know, okay, let's 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 let's, let's go back to Derrick Henry, where you where he's from. If it was like, man, teams so scared of Derrick Henry, they got nine in the box. That would be one thing. You've given teams nothing to be scared of with Beyond. Because you won't give him the ball anyway. There's nothing to be scared of. The one team you gave him the ball, they ripped to shreds with the Packers. That's the only team they've really done it. They, You have nothing to be worried about because you are the best Beyond defense. Every play that Beyond runs a little loop and then does a hitch, that's a win for the defense. Because anybody can do that. Anybody can run that little route. You brought Beyond here because he was the best running back in college football. And maybe one of the five best running backs in the world right now. But he's running the five. He's one of the five best running back prospects they've ever seen. Like that's how good he was coming out. And fuck it, we won't know. I was about to say we wouldn't know. Though. Yeah, we wouldn't. We want to have a motherfucking. Goof. He could be Christian McCaffrey. We wouldn't know. <laughs> he's supposed to be. He is supposed to be a one K one K guy. That's that. And, the, and the thing, real quick, real quick, real, real, real quick, real quick. Why is he lining up a receiver so much? And when you go to the top ten list of the running backs with most receiving yards, he's not on that list. Nowhere near it. Oh, because he's more effective as a decoy. Right. Is yeah. what you he's more effective yeah. off ball. Yeah. He, like he's an NBA shooter. Right. Like the like the gravity is gonna pull open the Drake London slam. That it, that is what's so frustrating, bro. Like, what? And that this is this is bottom line, this is probably what's so much so frustrating. Is if you were trying to let's say, all right, we'll decoy behind Kyle Pitts out route. Or decoy behind uh, Drake London fade route. You're decoying Bihan to hand it to Tyler Algier. You, like, you're not getting your best players involved and the hubris to think you could be an NFL play caller and not need elite NFL talent versus defenses is mind-boggling. Mike McDaniels, one of the best play callers we've ever seen in his young career. They said, hey, we can get Tyreek Hill. He said, trade whoever it takes. <laughs> That's an actual quote from him. He said, oh, yeah, I don't care who it takes. Go get Tyreek Hill. Because the difference between a good offense and a great offense and a great team and a Super Bowl team and a team that's going to be looking for a quarterback and a team that would be hosting a playoff game, you should be – this is the easiest schedule in the league. You should sleepwalk to a division championship. This is probably the easiest division in the league. And you're going to lose because the hubris of your coach is keeping him from saying, man – the, the best players on the team need the ball. Like, the plays... The, and what's, okay, I, fig, I figured it out. Like, let's take it to another team and another genius, Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan understands... Like, you don't see Kyle Shanahan drawing up beaters. You don't see him drawing up one-play touchdowns with Kyle, Brock Birdie. What makes the 49ers so good? He'd be like, hey, Christian, here's the ball. Go in space. And just go do something. 
Hey, Debo, your play. Yeah, hey, Debo, we're not going to run no deal. Listen, we're going to throw you out, get you in some open space, let you create. The Ravens, hey, Lamar, we're going to get you in open space. Dolphins, open space. Everyone just wants to say, hey, here's our best player. Let's get you in open space. Let's see if you can create. Arthur Smith, think he's playing Madden. You are not going to win every game from the call sheet, bro. You can't out-scheme every, every team. First of all, your scheme's nowhere near good enough. Even if it was, you're not going to win every play from the headset. You're not going to say, all right, this was the right play every time. Because especially in the NFL, because the defenses get paid too, sometimes the call's wrong. And when the call is wrong, which happens a lot for the Falcons, it's better to have, I don't know, one of the five best running backs in the league, Behan, running the reverse stretch toss week, whatever you call it, than Tyler Algier, who's going to lose four yards. It's, man... And to thank you, well said. That will be oh. our YouTube segment of that. Oh my god! Uh, they, but <laughs> to piggyback off a coach that should be fired, let's clap it up for a coach that did see his very, very needed demise in Josh McDaniel. <laughs> Shout out, Josh McDaniel. <laughs> we called that. We called that week two. We yeah. <laughs> week, oh, week yeah, two. Yeah. We came here and said, "Oh yeah, he's done. He's not he's making it through the season. Here, he's bro. out of here." Done. Um, you saw the players after like Devonta Adams was like, "No, we needed that." Like I don't know what Josh McDaniels does to teams because Brandon he, Marshall, not the best judge character, but the Brandon Marshall said the same thing about him. Like he just sucked the life out of them. Did, did you see the, the the little video about like the the guy like in the team meeting when he had to speak about the Patriots? Yeah. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Could you imagine? No, 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 but seriously, how off does Josh McDaniels got to be to hear that? He said, y'all could beat anybody. He said, all right, thank you. All right, don't ever talk about the Patriots. Like, what, nigga? You coached all right. <laughs> Yo, I don't, I really think he off for real. He got to no, be fucked up off, in the head. Bro. He's fucked up. He's, he's fucked gotta up. He's got to be rough. Don't talk about the Patriots like that. It's crazy. <laughs> It's that, crazy it really hurt. It must have really hurt. It must have really hurt. And that to his defense, so. if I went 18 and 1, it'd be a hot button for me, too. <laughs> but, dog, you're the Raiders coach. He said anybody could be beaten. That's not a time to disagree. Like, <laughs> that's not a time to be like, good point, but although. Like, <laughs> don't talk about the Patriots <laughs> like that, my brother. What the fuck? The Josh McDaniels? But uh, shout out to Antonio Pierce. We love to see a black head yeah. coach um, and former player. If y'all really been around NFL a long time, you know he was a former Giants linebacker, real dog. Um, so cool dude. We got the practice squad on the sideline. That was dope. Yes. I liked that. I, yes. was, I, I yes. didn't even think about yes. it. Yes. I didn't even listen. Full transparency. I didn't know practice squad players didn't come to the game. I'll be honest. They do some. They usually be in the hoodies. It yeah. be those are some of the practice squad players. But just I didn't know not yeah. all of them. No, play. I mean like the all of them like. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no. Oh, he had all of them. He had okay. all of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Oh, yeah. shout out to Max Crosby, too. I saw you. You know, I'm you know, Yeah, it's legal in Vegas, baby. <laughs> What's up, What's up, man? What's up, man? You feel me? <laughs> hey, I love Max Crosby. Shout out, Max Crosby. Shout out, T. I love Max Crosby. I do, I do One of my favorite Crosby, players bro. in the game. I, this may sound crazy. I like defenders who play a little dirty. Yeah. I, you know, listen, you play DN. Yeah. You play DN, bro. Like yo. you should be a little crazy. You yeah, should be a little fucked exactly, up. Exactly. Right? Like what bro. the hell? You, your, your job is to run into a nigga every day. Like, no. the fuck <laughs> <not?"> <laughs> so let's uh let's let's uh transition to the game of finesse. Right. Non contact. <laughs> non contact. You feel me? Yeah. And we'll start in the West, I guess. Um, start with the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Warriors and Nuggets. Hot start. Right. So. It's early in the season, so we this we're here to overreact. I yes. want to start this segment with this. We're, we're right. we got about thirty minutes left, 30, 40 minutes left. We're here to overreact. We know it's a long season, but yeah. what fun is a season if you take everything serious? Who wants to be calm? Who wants to be calm? Are we finna overreact to this like, shit? Yeah, you're fun. So at you're fun at parties. <laughs> it's only it's only game twelve, bro. Shut Who up. Give a fuck. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, they need to play ten game shit. <laughs> <laughs> Finna get crazy in this bitch. Could you imagine, like, yo, you talk about who? It's only week eight, guys. <laughs> like, shut up, care, dog. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Warriors, Warriors, and Nuggets. I do want to start with the top two teams. Yep. This is not hyperbolic. This is not an overreaction. Right now, I do think that's the Western Conference Finals. Okay. Um, but I, I want to start with the Nuggets because they're defending right. champs. Jokic goes without saying. Best player in basketball is like the easiest thirty and ten you'll ever see. Yeah, he's approaching a scary peak. <laughs> like a really scary peak. Like yeah. really, really scary. But I want to talk about the other guys. Mm -hmm. Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. Playing defense this year. Mm -hmm. Aaron Gordon. 
the role that got him a championship. Yeah. You can tell he, into he it. Yeah. really starting to love it and take mm-hmm. pride in being that guy. Yeah. Jamal Murray, the championship confidence. I know he's out with the hamstring. We pray he's healthy, stays healthy throughout the season. But you can see in the first couple games of the season the championship confidence. Yeah. Now, I, I will say I called this. Jamal Murray's not a 28-a-game guy. 27 right. a game. He's never going to be that. Right. He is going to always be between 17 and 22 a game. Right. But in the playoffs, mm-hmm. when he's playing 42 minutes, 44 minutes, he is more than capable of going to get you 30 at any given moment. Right. And Mike Malone, great coach, Jamal Murray, our Jokic, is always on the floor. Right. So when that bench unit comes in, Jamal Murray, hey, you, you get six, seven shots up now. Right. Close the quarters out, six, seven shots. I want you to shoot them every time we come down. Yeah. So the team – their starting lineup and KCP, his 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 uh, contribution goes without saying. Yeah. But Most that starting champion. five is special. It's yeah. a real special starting five. What worries me is their defense. I mean, not their defense, their bench. Mm-hmm. The only reason their bench worries me is because bench camaraderie in the playoffs is so important that I I think them losing the major bench pieces from last year will hurt them. Bruce right. Brown losing Bruce Brown will hurt them. Yeah. Um. But what have you seen from the Nuggets, and do you think they're going to walk to the number one seed? Because it look like they're about to. So I think they'll, I think they'll walk to the number one seed for sure, just because how hard they're going to play every night. Of course, mm. barring health, uh, you know, we really got to see with Jamal Murray how they're going to look without Jamal Murray, and because the reason that you said, not having such a deep bench, not having so like a deep bench to kind of have the wherewithal to withstand injuries from your best players. Kind of concerns me, but man, we are we are reaching very scary peak with Jokic. We are reaching very scary Terrifying. hours with him because I I don't remember the last the last time I saw someone play this good, he was in the Bay, and that's how far I'll take it. And I truly believe that like 2015, 2016, I remember going I remember going to high school every day. This was, you remember Jonathan? You remember Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. The Jonathan didn't Shut watch up, basketball, Jonathan. but. I was telling him at the start of school year, like, yo, this Steph Curry nigga. And Steph Curry got him into basketball that season. He was that good. That's crazy. And you see with Jokic, he is getting to a level where he's so good that it's kind of, it, it feels some nights like it's just nothing you can do. Like, like it feels like some nights where it's like, man, we played great. And he just... Still had thirty and fifteen. Somehow, like, he still just had thirty and thirteen. Like he's getting to that territory. I, I I believe I said it last week, and if I didn't, then my bad. Uh, but he's getting. He's at the point now where it's like, all right, just don't double him. Yeah. Let him score. Mm-hmm. Let's just not allow any of these backdoor cuts so yeah. he don't end up with 12 assists, too. Right. Like, that's the territory he is because he cannot be guarded one-on-one. Right. Anthony Davis cannot guard him. Yep. So if Anthony Davis yep. can't guard him in the post by himself, who the fuck else is finna do it? Exactly. <laughs> like, and that's the, as simple as it gets. And you're you're one thousand percent correct. But I love this starting five and what this team is. And I'm huge on Jamal Murray. I'm a big Jamal Murray guy. To to even to the jokes like where people have him, like people have him top fifteen. I'll have him top ten, top mm-hmm. five. And this team, you guys, relax. Remember, we're here to overreact, and then I'm a Spurs fan. <laughs> this team feels like that mid 2000s Spurs ish, where oh, yeah. I love that comparison. Dog. It's like, man, this might be the best big man in the league. Mm-hmm. He's doing something we never seen. Does it a little differently. This point guard, he you know, he not averaging 28. He not averaging 30. But he you get know, the he, job done. He's low mileage in the regular season, but come playoffs. He's 25, 26, 27. He's one of our best scoring options. We have a great guy taking a smaller role by choice. Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter kind of combined for Ginobili a mm-hmm. little bit. But what Aaron, and I'm so glad you led with Aaron Gordon, is because I love seeing like stuff like that. Just, like he, Aaron Gordon, might be the most annoying player to play against right now. <laughs> Like yes, a guy sir. who really just want to put his hard hat on. He not trying to do nothing. Cute Aaron Gore smashing offensive rebounds, pushing the catching tail, lives, catching lives, screaming, one thousand percent, sending angry. shit. Literally, like, he want to play defense. He want to rebound, and he knows he play hard. And this is why I have the Spurs comparison because they all want to play hard because they know if they play the right way, they all gonna shine. 
Yes, sir. They all gonna get theirs. Yes, sir. He know he cut hard. Jokic throwing that. Oop. Yes, sir. He know he set that screen hard. He might get that shot. Yes, so sir. that's what I see from the Nuggets early on. Where man, I don't know if there's a Jokic answer. No, I don't think there is a Jokic answer. If it is, Jaden McDaniels and the Timberwolves must got it. But like no, it's not. It's not. the idea of. We're hitting a point where Jokic, where the idea of you having the best player on your team, maybe only a couple people can think that. Everybody, almost a 30 of the 32 teams, or how many of it is? 30. Are wrong. One or two, y'all may be right. Giannis, Steph. Giannis, Steph, y'all may be right. Yeah. But the I, but when we were, even we can look back a couple years ago, when Braun and AD were playing Jokic in the bubble and they were the best players on the court, it's not that time no more. When, when AD and Braun come to town, they're not the big dogs on the court. And you can just see it. That Jokic controls the game the way they used to. Yes. The way Braun used to. Yes, he does. And we don't say that lightly. We are so, especially no, like that's with a huge compliment. Braun's <laughs> IQ and how he controls the game. Braun is always the gold standard for modern heliocentric offenses. Jokic, it's so weird. His heliocentric offense. It's kind of like steps where it kind of goes without the ball because of his height. It's so it, it, I, I can't be, I can I can it's nothing. Dog, he be running the break. He run the break and then he'll throw it up. He'll get ahead, yep. run the floor real hard, then seal him off in the post. Yep. He don't miss. He got the. I mean, he don't miss around the rim. He got one of the best mm-hmm. touches around the yep. rim I've ever seen in my life. Like he is truly just patient. special. Just patient. patient doesn't too. you de- never get him off his stance. He doesn't ever get too worried. Yep. He don't turn the ball over often. Like the only thing, like the only time I see Jokic really has slips is when he's exhausted in the playoffs. Right. Like that's the only time when they've just been running and he just like he'll make a bad pass or shoot, miss right. a layup he usually don't but that's it though like he is unstoppable bro, I forget, oh, man what he's unstoppable like, might have been a lakers game clock rolling down he's on the left he's on the left wing clock's mm. rolling down so you know and b is two seconds left he catches on the wing open he's shooting ad even if he shouldn't shoot it he's shooting it the help is close enough where it's not a great shot i'm like man okay he's got to take a contested shot let's see no he's seven feet so he literally takes one step Gets to the free throw line, and then you remember, oh, shit, he's seven feet with amazing touch. So somehow this is a good shot. This is an amazing shot for him. It's all bottom of the net. They run back. Like, the the ability to just wipe away bad plays. Yeah. To always be right situationally. You really, you can't underestimate how important it is IQ-wise when you have Kobe, Mike, LeBron, Jokic, Steph, Someone that, uh, actually, Steph, CP3, someone like that who is going to always, I don't want to say make the right play, but keep you in the right spot situationally. There you go. Yeah. That's that's perfect. The right yeah. spot situationally. And I was about to say, it's funny you brought those names up. I was about to say, y'all listen to what we're saying about them. Yeah. It sound like we're talking about LeBron. It sound like we're talking about oh, Steph. It sound really? like we're talking about Kobe. Like, yeah. this, the way we, people are starting to describe him. Right. Is in that all time range. We're hitting a scary. Peak We're hitting part. a scary peak for him, but that brings us to the guy that's been at the scary peak for a minute. The Warriors, um, mm-hmm. six and three, uh, six and three had a bad loss last night. Steph should have made the layup. Oh well, uh, they come off a road trip. They were five and two on the road trip. Uh, they had a four game winning streak on the road trip, with which which would have been the longest road streak win they had last year. Yeah. Um, they look faster. They look more hungry. They look mm. more determined. They look like they enjoy each other this year. My question, simple question to you real quick is, are the Warriors real contenders? I think yes. They're, they're absolutely always real contenders with Steph. And I think Steph in this situation is probably like, if we talk about Steve Kerr waking up every day, like, man, thank God I coach Steph. Mm. Listen, there should be only two comfortable coaches waking up this morning. And it's going to sound weird, but the Bucks coach this morning and Steve Kerr are the only people watching these Jokic games not terrified. Because while Jokic is like, we just went 10, 15 minutes talking about he's the best thing we've ever seen. Like, ever. Like, he's the best big ever. Like, we were talking about how he's LeBron at center. <laughs> Curry is the Jokic stopper. Yes. Because in the same way Jokic breaks the game, 
Steph can do that to Jokic. There you go. That's why I think the eight, and especially this year, he's a contender because man, can't nobody beat the Nuggets but them. Yeah. Maybe Minnesota. Yeah. Like can't nobody like Minnesota doing it too stupid. And uh, <laughs> Steph Curry, <laughs> and we talked about this last year. He'd be the best player on the floor for every playoff series, but what one maybe. With the and, and I will say this because it has been a little gap since we about I mean all the games have been played since, since our last episode mm-hmm. but I'm coming around on the Chris Paul thing you know the summer they just, listen they, them niggas are running they're like yeah he gonna start yeah for sure he gonna start bro like I was like I was like Steve Kerr do some crazy shit but yeah. I don't think he that crazy <laughs> See, I I love Chris Paul coming off the bench I you've seen it a couple times this year where the bench is failing and you saw this last year. Where the bench was failing, they're on the road. Steph sitting on the bench. It's about eleven minutes left in the fourth. You down ten? You like, yeah, this one's over. <laughs> yes, sir, <laughs> it's wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> now having Chris Paul, we talked about Jokic situationally. He's making the good pass. Knows, knows, just knows how to play the game. Yeah, you just can't teach what Chris Paul knows. No, and surrounded with that bench unit, he's a little, he's a crutch for Clay to lean on. Clay don't have to create as much, and he can get everybody the easy joints. And what I love the most is all Chris Paul points are gravy. That's what I love. All Chris Paul points are gravy. They are not coming in like, yo, CP. We need 10. We I need 12 and 12. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, nah. If Chris Paul score four points, they're all gravy on yep. the top. Because he's only here to just keep things going straight. Yes. I think the Warriors are going to be so much better in two months. Because I don't think Andrew Wiggins is going to keep being the worst player in the league. The, they're, yeah. they're playing amazing with their second to third best player, or at least second to third best offensive player, mm-hmm. not contributing, playing awful. Like, He's playing really bad. He, he, think about it, he missed four months of NBA and came back better than he's playing now. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's playing like shit. So, I think they'll be straight. And listen, you lifelong, lifelong Warriors fan since Steph Curry's life began. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What have you seen, especially last night? Because you can talk about last night a little bit. A little ironic after we talked to, you know, the, Le- the LeBron joint of him missing that layup. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I'm very, very, very pleased. Because I came into the season and I told you I didn't have any expectations. Right. And I didn't. Because I didn't want my expectation, expectations to be too high to something they can't reach. Right. So I wanted to see what Kamiko was. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see what CP3 came as, came in and did. I Ooh. wanted to see how Clay looks. Yeah. Um, and yes, Moody. Yeah. So, and I wanted to see Sarge because I, I know who Sarge is and I was right. familiar with him in Phoenix, but I ain't going to sit here and act like I have watched real film on yeah. Sarge. Now, I know he could sh- I knew he could shoot. I knew he could pass. I knew what he could do. But I defensively, de- defensively, I wasn't very sure about him, things mm-hmm. like that. So, I wanted to see it all come together. The starting man, the starting five, I was not worried about at all. And I'm still not worried about Andrew Wiggins. Warriors, twenty of their next twenty six, twenty six of the uh, twenty of their next twenty six games are at home. Mm-hmm. So I do think in this long home stand, Andrew Wiggins will find himself. And like you said, in two months they'll look like completely different teams because right. of that. But I'll hit three things. One, Steph Curry, that guy is ridiculous. Yeah. I, I want you to know he is averaging thirty on fifty seven, forty seven, and ninety two right now. Yeah. That is absurd. He's 35 years old and 6'2". Yeah. That shit is stupid. What he has made at 35. My fault. Like, he is... He is I was going to say something crazy. <laughs> if, but at 35... At 35, most threes through eight games we've ever seen in our yeah. lives. 35. Still setting new three-point records. Yep. Just doing crazy shit. Breaking his own record. So, his... his Trainer, shout out Brandon Payne, said he shot the ball better this summer than he ever has. Which is scary. He also said that he started off working out earlier, basketball-wise, earlier than he ever has because he's older now, so it doesn't come back to him as fast. So whereas he usually would take a full, like, 21 to 30 days off, he only took 10 days off from basketball. Right. Picked it right back up. So I think you're seeing that from Seth. The the leadership and determination from him has been beautiful. Secondly, we'll go where you went. Chris Paul. Chris Paul 
and, and I and when we came in, you was like, what the fuck? You traded away the, the 18, 20 point a game score. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but it's Chris Paul. And and fuck, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah. we did trade away 20 a game. But, like, mm-hmm. also that's Chris Paul. And so I was trying to think of it. All right, so what are the Warriors thinking? And that's how after the initial shock of losing Jordan Poole, because I'm a really big fan of Jordan Poole, after the initial shock went away, I was like, okay, Chris Paul. Never turns the ball over. Mm-hmm. He is one of the ten smartest players we've ever seen in life. Yeah. And instead of asking him to be a number one or number two option and run a show for 38 minutes a night, you're asking him to play 25 minutes a night and keep a second unit from drowning? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I came around. Right yeah, for sure. That makes a lot I'm of sense, actually. For sure, yeah. So now the young Kamingo, who is a lob threat – can learn how to play in the pick and roll through the best pick and roll point guard ever. Yep. So now the young, big, and Tracy Jackson four-year college guy, you could tell, who knows how to set a screen but may not necessarily be the best lob, may not necessarily know how to run lobs in the NBA, know where they can, what type of passes the NBA player can throw because you'll hear NBA players or regular basketball players talk about playing with a real point guard and being like, oh, dog, I ain't never had a pass like that. My bad. And so it's things like that that he can teach you and shows ways you'll get the ball and you won't even know. Mm -hmm. Open that up. Kaminga getting more open shots because I can throw this pass that Jordan Poole can't throw or doesn't see or doesn't even want to throw. Right. Clay Thompson, as you said, doesn't have to create his own shot as much. Mm. Sarge, my pick and roll mate for a full NBA season. They look like bread and butter in the pick and roll. Yeah. So he has slowed down that second unit. It was never an issue last year with their five-man unit. It was the bench and it was a camaraderie. Yeah. He has changed that. Mm. He has brought into a role and – they don't turn the ball over. I think Chris Paul is up to like 72 assists and seven turnovers this year. Which is that nuts. is fucking nuts. Yeah. That is so crazy. he has been such a, I want to say like a bandage yeah. for the Warriors and their turnover problem. And him playing him close. I, and I, I don't know how I like it in the playoffs with the bigger guards in the West and stuff. Yeah. But right now him closing games helps them so much one, because they're not turning the ball over. And two, he is forcing Steph to shoot the yeah, ball. He's, he's forcing like, the yo, ball. what the f- – why are yeah. you running away? Come get the ball. Right. Or it's – no, come here. Set the screen for this nigga so I can give him the ball. Right. Like, he is forcing Steph to run this offense. Yeah. Because Steph would let Steve be passive, and Steve, and Steph would be too passive at times to his detriment. Right. That's not happening anymore. Yeah. The last thing I'll hit on, and this will be quick, defense and rebounding. Okay. Yeah. Their defense of intensity has is worlds better than what it was. Just the effort, like yeah. the simple effort, like diving on the floor, yeah. actually hustling to this closeout. Yeah. Everybody coming to crash because we know we small. It's things like that. They out rebounded the Nuggets yesterday without Draymond Green. Yeah, which is not which is crazy. You saw Nobody, Steph, you saw Steph stag two or two. I think two of them were like two y- yes, two crazy. Yes. Man. He did KCP the worst way on that second. <laughs> yeah. He little boy. He little boy yeah. KCP on that second one. So that's that's kind of where I end on this. Not too yeah. much on that. But defensively, they just are playing with tenacity. They're playing fast. But I, Gary Payton Jr. Wiggins. I want to shout out Wiggins because he's defending and rebounding even though his shot isn't falling. That's important. Right. We know what Kevon Looney brings. Chris Paul. I think people – is Chris Paul finna sit on the floor against John Morant? Nah. But what they what they started doing is, all right, we're going to put Chris Paul on y'all words bench player. We don't care that he has a size advantage because Chris Paul is 39-year-old with grown man strength. Yeah. You're not finna back Chris Powell down. Right. So he, you saw him in the first game, like, giving KD the body. Like, KD didn't yeah. really move. So it's been like that all year where Chris Paul can go guard these, these second, third option on the bench right. or the third option on the starting unit, yeah. and you throw him in the post, you're not going to move him. You're not going to score him. And you can't dribble on him because he got the quickest hands we've ever seen. Right. So I love the Warriors, bro. And yeah. I really do think the Warriors right now, the Warriors and the Nuggets, and I, and I honestly, for due to respect for the Nuggets, I'll put the Nuggets in the tier of their own. But right below them is the Warriors in another tier of their own. Yeah. Phoenix, I hate right now. Yeah. The Lakers, I hate right now. The Clippers are a laughable Ash. team right now. Yeah. The set, the third, the De'Aaron Fox losing Minnesota. I mean, De'Aaron Fox being out for a month for Sacramento might ruin their entire season. Facts. OKC might be the third best team in the West right now, dog. Yeah. Like so. 
I am loving what I am seeing from the Warriors. Um, but yeah, that's, that's and another thing on Chris Paul. Two two more things just to wrap it up. So first, one of my biggest pet peeves. We talked about this on the show a lot last year. They no longer lead the league in heat checks. Which oh my oh listen, my god! It's no. a, it's it's a manna <laughs> from heaven. They no longer lead the league in heat checks, which is awesome. I just I hated to see it last year. And you do lose Jordan Poole, so you do lose lose some of the heat checks he made. But bruh, staying on time. Like, we're not just going to change the offense because one person hit a three. I really love. And just, we, uh, like, we've watched the Warriors for so long, so I know Steph don't get no calls. They've never been a team that got a lot of free throws. But with Chris Paul, the intangible merchant bag that you get with Chris Paul, you're, you're in the bonus with a couple minutes left Come now for some reason. now. Now, now you listen, a couple extra Chris Paul fouls, Couple extra Kaminga fouls. Now you're in the bonus the whole second half. Like the little intangible things that Chris Paul is adding up together is kind of it's kind of like twenty points for Jordan Poole. Yeah, like I'm I'm coming around That's on him point. in a regular role. Like man, for twenty five minutes, listen, we're gonna get a couple fouls, get a couple oops, get a couple. You know, everything's gonna be really easy, and just bruh, having the brain trust of. These minds together is important. They've won, they've won a lot of games. They've lost a lot of games. They know what works. They know what does not work. And to your credit, like we always talk about how good Steph Curry is off the ball. And you will see him try to get off the ball sometimes in big scenarios. But in the past, he could never get the ball back. Like by the time he come off the screen, the offense has moved the other way. No, no, Clay said, Paul, fuck it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris Paul still standing there dribbling. Watching him, <laughs> waiting for him. What <laughs> you gonna do? Cause you getting this ball back? Yeah, well, nah, <laughs> like, just just waiting, mm-hmm. stuff. Like yeah. he keeps them on schedule, and that's so important. Um, real quick, real quick, before we do get off of him, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep the show under two hours. It's real hard though. There's a lot to get to in this tweet. Um, but yeah. the the one thing about Chris Paul that is different. Two, wait, okay, two things. Yeah, one thing. Chris Paul hasn't found his three pointer because Chris Paul has never been a catching three point shooter in his Back. life. You you will see him a lot. They play Saturday. You'll see him probably three times have an open three and go into shooting and then not shoot it because right. he's not comfortable with it yet. I expect his three ball to start falling in about in the next 25, 35 yeah. games. Secondly, though, the th- another point about Jordan Poole and Chris Paul is there was no shot that Jordan Poole took that I knew was going in. Facts. Every time Chris Paul goes to that mid range, it feels like it's good. That's dude. a good possession. Yeah. Oh, Chris Paul shooting the mid range jumper. Yep, I cool. can live with that. Yeah. Cool. And that that has changed the offense. And especially life. because there's no mid range hunter on that team, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like oh, well, I forgot. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. Like yes. okay. Yeah. Yes. And they uh, st- and you still have like like for five six minutes, th- we we watched them like that just classic Warriors who. Oh, you trap Steph, get the ball to the free throw line. Like, oh, yeah, just – we saw Kavon Looney throw. Yeah, 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 Like, yeah, 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 like they, they are hitting on all cylinders. They, they really are. And lastly, the the IQ of CP, I want to I wanna bring this point up, and I'll try to find a play, but Sacramento, when they play Sacramento, when Clay hit the game winner, j- originally Chris Paul was taking the ball out. Oh, yeah, and they had Draymond that was going to do the handoff. And they had Draymond was going to do the handoff. Right. And when they first went to go take the ball out, they trapped Steph. Yeah. And he was having a hard time getting open. Chris Paul, before he got the ball, was like, hey, I'll take it out. I mean, Draymond, you come take it out. Yeah, switch. So now we don't got nobody on the court they can double. Mm-hmm. And that change, that literally got them into their set quick enough for Clay to get that shot off right. because of that simple little adjustment Chris Paul made. Yeah. And his little shit. And then right after that, he was the one that caught that Malik Monk was coming around to do the flare screen into the lob. And he was the one that was like Wiggins from the bench. Yeah. Wiggins, no, he's coming, boom, boom, stop the play. Literally. So it's little things like that that – the basketball genius of Draymond, the basketball yeah. genius of Steph Curry, the basketball genius of CP, and then Steve Kerr, who is more knowledge than maybe all of them. Yeah. Like, all of them geniuses coming together, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to beat right. them in a playoff series. It's going to be hard to beat them in four times. So, uh, some quick hitters. We'll go through some quick hitters. But, um, okay, Steve, real yeah. threat or not? Yes, not yet, though. 
They are they are the Timberwolves from last year. Mm-hmm. I think they're one year away. Okay. I think they're because this is this is Chet's rookie year technically. Yes. I think Chet will eventually be their best player, mm-hmm. and I think next year he'll step into the. Ne- I think at his size it's going to be a little easier because right now he's already amazing. Yeah. I think another year playing NBA basketball, he'll take that next step. They need to hurry up and win, though, ironically enough, because the CBA ruins their chances of keeping that unit together. So I think next year they'll be a serious contender in a playoff series. I think this year they're just a a year too early. They'll get a seventh seed this year and lose to the Warriors, Nuggets, or Phoenix. Um, And whoever gets them in that first round, it'll be a good series. It'll it'll be a really good series. It's going to be fun to see Shea and Chet in the playoffs. Chet Chet is a real deal. I was excited to see him play because I didn't know if he would translate well with the slender body. But the NBA is getting slender. The athletes are getting a little bit smaller. It's more conditioned and faster game. And you don't got to play Braun every night. And you don't got to play Braun, and you don't got to deal with Shaq. Yeah. Tim, David Robinson, right. all in the same damn, all in the same day year. Right. So, so I think Chet will be. I think Chet and Shea will be a one A one B situation. Well, some right. nights Chet will be the best player. Some night it'll be Che Shea. But yeah. they will. They are a championship level duo. Right. That is what I will say about them. Are they real contenders now? I'm not sure yet. No, they're not real contenders now. But in two or three years, yeah. they will be. And Chet and Shea are a championship duo. You keep together. Do not break that team up. Right. Um, Clippers. <laughs> so if I have. If, if we have the board on here, I just got Clippers ass. That's all I wrote. <laughs> yeah, they stink. Because what are yeah, y'all hard. niggas doing? Yeah, harder. It's over. I feel so. I feel so bad for Westbrook this morning. I do. I, do. I feel so bad for Westbrook. I feel so bad for Ty Lue. I feel we, bad for Kawhi. Too. We figured it out. We figured it out. We had a good team. We had a good roster. We had a listen. We had a great distributor. We had a shoot. We had a star, star defensive guys, hard hat guys. And for the first time in Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Ty Lue's experience, we didn't have mountain expectations. We didn't come into the season with like, oh, yeah, we got to get to the championship. We had, you know, just who? Just try to stay healthy. Now, it's over. What's the Martin Scorsese? It's over. Pure similar. It's done. I've never seen someone destroy a team as quickly as James Harden destroyed this team. Shout out to him, too. Great yeah. guy. Living in L.A. now. <laughs> Hey, look, James Harden, boy, you a Mr. Finesse, dog. (laughs) But James James just ruins the flow, the feng shui of their team, if you will. I think the ball will stop too much because James Harden going to want his, and then Kawhi going to want his, and PG going to want his. And you know what that's going to do? Get everybody out of rhythm. They don't have a real offense. Again, we're overreacting, but they don't have a real offense. Rush. Is going to play hard, but how much does Russ see the ball? Does Russ right. just want to run around and be a three and D player again, yeah, like he was in LA? Like, like we did this, like we did this already. Yeah. So, I I expected them to let James have the ball, but they're gonna have to take the ball out of his hands if they want to be a good team. I don't know if they do this. Um, I think the Clippers are a first round exit waiting to happen. Shit, I don't know if they get there. No us, the bro. Let's be, let's be and then, bro, like yeah, like James Harden, bro, shoot the ball. Shoot the ball, bro. Like you catch the ball, do a dribble. Like dog. I ain't listen. This he missed Houston so bad, bro. This year, jo- Josh Allen and James Harden are having the same problem, where they don't want to leave that year. Like Josh Allen, he is trying to play that Chiefs championship game, divisional game, every Sunday. <laughs> every Sunday, he want to do it again. <laughs> like James Harden. Boy, he just missed 2016, 2017 so bad, man. He want to average 35 again so damn bad, <laughs> bro. He want to take 36 shots Dog. a game so bad. Dribble, 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 dribble. Pass, dribble, dribble, dribble. <laughs> hey, bro. I can't blame him, dog. I don't play some real fun pickup games where I don't shot the ball 16 times. Bro, no, like, you like, just I, ISO the hook? You no just defense ISO. Either. No defense either. I'm just just cooking. Bro, living in Houston, <laughs> that's probably like, <laughs> like just a couple of years, he probably had the most fun we like. 200 million Houston strippers. No, no, no. 400 million. Because remember, he got oh, 200 from Adidas. Adidas. 400 million. 400 million Houston strip clubs. I'm on 35 points a night, nigga. <laughs> and I'm 6'5. <six>, <laughs> Lord. Having bunches of fun. Like, <laughs> Lord. Like, I'm James Harden. <laughs> oh, my God. And Lil Baby finna blow. Um, <laughs> Yo, <bro. laughs> like, he the first nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I hear you, Lil Baby. He heard freestyle in the strip club, and he said, I got to be friends with Twins. <laughs> But you really got to think about it. Coming from that to what he got to wake up to now, got to feel like hell. 
<laughs> gotta do gotta like, it. Now you see why Carmelo couldn't do it. Yo, I get it. I get it, bro. <laughs> Carmelo shooting up bit 26 times a game. You want me to, <laughs> you want me to stand in the corner? <laughs> Are you crazy? Hey, hey, I'll take another step further. Hey, I said, come off the bench. <laughs> Shit, come up to, nigga, I'm AI. Bitch, I'm retired, Nigga, I'm, I'm playing the with answer, the wrong nigga. nigga. <laughs> I'm AI. What? I'm the answer, nigga. What the fuck? Nigga, if I'm coming up to the bench, who's starting? <laughs> who's starting, nigga? <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, so to the East real quick. Yeah. The Bucks do not play any defense uh, at the guards, and we told them that was going to happen. Uh, it's only going Chris Middleton, is his knee's gone. He can't play defense. Dame never played defense. We tried to tell you that. Um, Pat McConnellson is white, so that's just a mismatch. Surprise. Um, <laughs> it was my nigga Alex. My nigga Alex says, surprisingly, the Malik Beasley, Damian Lillard backcourt can't defend. <laughs> Much to everybody's surprise. <laughs> Listen, I, I, will, I will be very transparent. <laughs> I watch tons of basketball. I watch tons of Bucks basketball. I didn't know the plan going into the season was Malik Beasley start <laughs> like a major midgets contribute. Like the nigga who couldn't play for the Lakers, he gonna come to Milwaukee. <laughs> I guess we talk about the change of scenery, but man, um, I don't believe in it. So yeah, Malik Beasley. Yeah, like Malik Beasley was like, yeah, I can't do it with LeBron. Too much pressure. Let's go play with Giannis. <laughs> He he should have looked up and found himself at Charlotte. Like he would have had a crazy next three years, bro. He would be having so much fun on the Knicks right now, bro. Just Stand, hooping, just shooting, no expectations. Yeah, now in Milwaukee, <laughs> hey Malik, you're taking PG one tonight. <laughs> what? Yeah, you got Luca. What you mean, nigga? Like Luca who? Yeah, like, I got Luka. Luka Doncic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Luca went to the bench. You got Kyrie. What? Like. How is this my responsibility? Actually, no, I don't. No, yeah, I don't. Like, y'all figure something. They, out. they in trouble. They are. That, listen, Dame shooting bad right now, so they look worse than they are. But that defense is going to be a problem. And defense is going to be a problem. That's why I said the Celtics are beating them. The Celtics, they they'll, they'll probably they'll probably make the Eastern Conference Finals because I don't care about Philly. I call them the most. They'll be the most disappointing team. I do not give a fuck. They are the number one seed right now. They will fall apart at some point, even if that's. <laughs>